That's better. Welcome to lift. Step on the glutes first. I do recommend a medicine ball over a foam roller for those of you that, that just have the roller. Um, especially for things like this and the quadriceps and the big the big guns. Need some release in. Okay, you can switch sides. And briefly, if you haven't already. Um, it's not the be all and end all if you can't get the leg up, but it does help put this, the muscle in a little bit of a stretch. Just go to the thick tissue around there. And this is just as good for my benefit as it is for yours. Oh. And also, with, the, with the regards to us using a chair today, or part of a seti, that's fine. Uh, maybe a couple of pillows wouldn't go miss, or cushions, anything like that. And we're going to be picking them up off the floor. So we're going to do some squats and pickups and just yeah, just some general funky functional stuff. Hope you're all keeping well, keeping active. Be looking forward to this one, no doubt. Okay, go from the glutes now into the quadriceps. We're going to all attempt at least to get up into this upper quad, quadrant of the quads. So let's take it down on the ball. Full leg stretch to the side, straight down on the elbows. Don't do much else for the first part. No doubt have been sitting a little bit more than normal for, for most of us. So let's just keep it quite high up in that hip area. Try and get a little, little bit of length potential out of our hip flexors. It's going to be needed to extend the hips throughout the workout. Ooh. And just travel, maybe go a little bit on more to the inside line of that, or maybe if you want to turn it more to the outside, just, just have a little feel around. And just go all those little tender spots. Okay, now we're going to move away from the hip area more directly into the quad, so just edge yourself forward a little bit. So we're hitting the midline of your thigh now, okay gang? So anywhere between the hip and the knee is good. Let the leg relax, promote deep breathing. If you don't feel much with this like I am right now, um, I, I suggest you turn away from the ball. Okay, with, so with that said, I'm going to now go to one foot here, and I'm almost hitting the lateral line. I mean, I am hitting the lateral line, but not completely side on. Ooh, and that's a different response. So, same as before, hold on those spots for about 15 seconds and then bit by bit, just walk the arms again, just travelling down that leg in stages. So I'm about six inches away from my knee now, I'm slightly off centre, so you have a little feel around. But ultimately let the leg relax. Don't, don't just be on the ball moving on the roller, moving constantly, just, just slow, slow, slow. Okay, a little bit longer on this side, purely for my benefit. <laughs> it's all the running I've been doing. Okay, good. Switch around. So again, we spend, I don't know, about a third of the time up into the, the high area of the thigh. I think that's going to serve us all well. Okay, just let that leg just melt, just let it go. If you don't want to get down on the floor for this, this you could go with a lacrosse ball against the wall. And you can just, just press, lean into the wall. There's always a way, but ultimately we're just, we're just massaging the tissue, getting it ready for the work. Getting it some moisture and some blood flow through it. Okay, good. Now pass away from, I would suggest maybe coming off the ball as you move down. It's quite painful to, to relax then. Then when you get in a spot like we do, just start to relax. Start to breathe. Every exhale, just a little bit more, letting that leg go, just let it go. Just when you think it's, it's relaxed, it really isn't. You've just got to really tune into this gang. Especially now, when you probably need it more than ever. Good, a good 15 seconds, lift off the ball or the roller, come forward, fraction, pause again, start promoting the breath. Start promoting that relaxation. It's all good, it's all good. A little bit longer, so again, I'm going to bypass quite a bit myself because I know where these lumps are with me. So I'm going to be tacking just, just above the knee. Again, relax and breathe through this. We're all in it together, gang. Wow. Okay, total dips, different noticing for me sitting around. Okay, um, one more for the legs. 
because we do have some uh, like lateral side stepping work coming up. So I'm going to suggest we go into the inner thighs, being in particular the groin first. So I'll adopt a very similar position that you just did. The only difference is I've got that leg on the ball now, not the other. Okay, so I'm, I'm on a 90 degree or almost 90 degree bend on this on this leg that the ball is on. Okay, starting up quite high up into that groin and just letting my body just wear that whole leg just relax on top. That does the release for you. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna be feeling a dull, achy sensation that should generally spread itself throughout, throughout the, um, the release. And bit by bit, just moving away from the ball gradually each time, just feeling around, asking questions. Adjusting if need be. If you're still not feeling much, just keep going out towards the knee. And trust me, for most of you, you'll feel it probably more tender in the, in the inside of the knee. So I've got another 20 seconds on this leg, so let's try that. Let's go away from the groin and take it towards the knee. Keep it away from the bones, obviously. Just go to thick tissue, tweak the angles. Make sure that the supporting elbow is directly underneath the shoulder, so I'm not too uncomfortable with this. Okay, awesome. And onto the other leg. And just to give you a heads up on the workout, it might be slightly different from, from some of them we've done recently. Some of the exercises at least, but I just want us to master the basics first before we start to push on and make things more complicated, so, so to say. Again, start up in that, in that groin and just, just relax the leg. all good, it's all good. And again, just take away a little bit. So we're just working it down that leg in stages. If you're gonna move, well, after you've moved on to a new spot, then make sure that movement is uber slow. Sometimes, you don't need to move it, just need to relax the leg, just let it go. It's gonna give us a little bit more length, potentially in our inner thigh muscles, this kind of work. If any of you have knee pain or or back pain for that matter, these kind of releases really help to bring the body back to a better balance. So believe it or not, rolling through the inner thigh can massively help your movement in many ways that can reduce any pain going on. A little bit longer. And yeah, it hurts. <laughs> I get it, it really hurts at times when you find a spot, but I consider myself lucky if that happens. Okay, right, what time are we on? Okay, I want you to do one more with the ball or the roller. In fact, I'm going to be a little bit, I'm going to, I'm going to chill out a little bit with this next one. I'm going to use a roller, just old school. So we're going to work into your lap tissue now, okay? Your mid-back, upper back, yeah, where your wings would be if you could fly. So, we're going a nice, cool, relaxed sideline position like this, okay? Again, use cushions underneath the hips if you need any support there. And I'm just going to gently let my body just take to the roller. So it's in my upper back. It's not, I'm not massaging my armpit or my rib cage. It's in my back. So if you notice I'm slightly turned away from you guys, just slightly as I get into that upper back. There's some bones around there, so be careful if some of you on the roller on, on the med ball with this, just don't go so heavy. And just start to chill. And almost allow that lap to conform itself around the shape of the ball. Almost like we're trying to adapt to these um, releases. Not too uncomfortable in time. Oh, nice. Oh, I could just stay for another 50 minutes. <laughs> I wonder if I'd disappoint many of you if we did. No, no, no. Okay, let's finish off on this other side. We'll do a bit of a thigh stretch after this, a little bit of something for the hamstrings. So I'm not lying completely on one leg by the way, I'm, I'm literally on the edge of my bum there to be fair. Take a bit of the weight off and just make those little, little adjustments. It doesn't feel half as bad on a roller. I mean I've, I've used the medicine ball for this so much over the last couple of years that this, this feels quite enjoyable. <laughs> Which it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be enjoyable, you all know that. It should be... Um, quite a stress to, to get anything back from this. We've got to put ourselves through some form of stress to, to improve and move through this. Okay, right. Let's move on. So something we do nine times out of 10 is the quadriceps stretch. 
So you're going to need a chair, a chair, um, yeah, a seat of a chair or uh, the edge of the settee, the arm, or what, whatever. Okay, there, there is a way to do this standing, okay? So if any of you don't really don't want to kneel, I mean, that, that sucks because we've got quite a few kneeling exercises tonight. Um, so I will, yeah, use, use cushions where you need to. Um, but yeah, if you want to do this one standing, we could do it just hold into a wall. We lift the leg up, take the foot, and pull back, okay? So if anyone's doing that standing, that fill your boots with that. I'm going to take this to the chair, knee, and sweep the other leg round. You're probably already there, you're probably beating me to it, okay? Oh, this is a nice one. After all that quad release we did on the, on the, the ball and the roller, this is all good. So sit yourself up and look at the front leg angle. So just look down the side, you're really looking at a 90 degree on that front leg. Okay, I'm going to chisel in through the corner. So I'm going to do a little bit of what I call a functional brace. Okay, let me quickly explain for those of you that don't know. We, we are retracting, we're pulling the tummy in, but at the same time we are expanding our rib cage kind of wider and upwards. Okay? So that creates some intra-abdominal pressure. We're going to hold that together. Start with the heel drag with the front foot. So you're pushing the foot into the floor, you're pulling it back without anything moving. That should give us a tension stretching that back leg. And just to add the cherry on top, I'm going to tilt my pelvis forward to a, um, a posterior tilt to a 12 o'clock for the, the Pilates pods. And hold that tension. So I've got a heel drag, I've got abdominals, and I've got a posterior tilt. All of the above. Maintain. Last few seconds. Okay, good. It would be nice to see you all in house doing that so I can come and tweak it in places. Okay, switch sides. And take your time getting the setup. We always say strength is in positioning, so take your time getting this set up, letting it nice and pretty. Well, not pretty for me, obviously. Okay, so I'm going to come in, in with the abdominals first, remember. Good. Lift. Okay, start with the heel drag. And as the heel drag pulls his front leg back, Heel your pelvis to 45 in that uh, posterior tilt. Uh, there, so we're holding that. It is key now, gang, that this is a tension stretch, okay? It's a tension stretch. We're creating that pull. We're creating how angry we want this to make this stretch now, okay? So I want you to go angry. Last 10 seconds. Go pull back. Maintain all of the above. Five, four, keep that posterior tilt. That's enough of that. I hope you all felt that like me. Okay, sip of water, me thinks. I want you to do a little bit of a standing hamstring stretch first before we actually get into this. My mic, when we, once we've done this hamstring stretch, as we normally do, I'll explain each exercise. We'll go through it several times, left and right, and then we'll put it together in what I've gone with tonight is 45 seconds of work. Okay, because I found that the 30 second bursts were just too short. So 45 gives us a little bit longer to work. However, if you feel you need to rest, please rest, because I'm sure I'm going to do lots of that. And we've got 15 seconds in between. Maybe 20, sorry, 20, yeah. So 45, 20 is the work. Before we get into that, I want you to try and create some length potential in the hamstrings, which leads up into the glutes. So we can release these areas. Okay, simple stance. We're going with our bilateral stance game, so it's feet. Hip, hip to shoulder width apart. Just double check that everything is pointing forward, okay, in regards to the toe spread and such. Okay, from there, we're gonna do a very, very e uh, easy baby squat, okay? So I'm gonna imagine the chair is literally behind you. If you've got a chair, use it. And just hinge the hips back a little bit and just start to bend the legs a touch like this. And just know when I'm here, guys, look at my, my angle of my shins, because it's key we're not here. See my torso? I'm just going to sit my hips back a bit. It should feel like you're heavy on your heels, like you want to fall back. But please don't fall back. Okay, from here, very, very gently, tuck in the abdominals like we did on the stretch earlier. Two things, send your hips back slowly as you slowly extend your legs, lifting the sit bones up. We're trying to create tension in this as we did on the quad stretch, okay? So there's my stretch there. I've still got a nice bend in the legs because I've just dropped my torso down a little bit more, keeping the sit bones lifting up, okay? Make sure you've got your abdominal switched on throughout this, okay? Come back up gently. So it's a simple hinge pan, what we call a deadlift. One more time. So hinge back, squat down, come down, pause there. Watch the knees don't come forward now, okay? Look at your knees now. As you send your hips back, 
Your knees should slightly be moving back at the same time as your legs extend. Sit bones lifting, lifting, lifting. Keep the legs bent. Tweak the angles from here, gang, just to get that big pull in the back of the legs. A few more seconds. Really, we're going to need this. We're going to need this stretch. Ah, nice. Oh, okay. Hope that felt good for you all. Just as much tension on the front as we have on the back now. Okay, straight into our split stance just to warm things through. So let's bring our right leg in front, left leg behind. Okay, little bend in both legs and just kind of soften into it a touch. Okay, double check now that we've got front shin bone is vertical and we've got a slight angle on your thigh bone now. Yeah, can you see that? But saying that, I don't want anybody to be totally vertical here. So sit the hip back a little bit, stick your bum out a touch, just a fraction. Okay, now line both knees up from the side. So lats up here, then up in front, both knees are parallel, okay? And then we bring our body upright without changing any of that. So still got a slight bend in this front leg, slight bend in the back leg. Okay, start with your heel drag on the, on the front leg, please. I didn't state which is left or right, so I'm guessing you've all got a different leg in front. So we're holding that, that tensegrity through the body. We're trying to create these muscles, bum and hamstrings to start to bite and move, tighten up. The more you pull the floor back, the more effort you put in, the more you will get back, okay? Watch the front leg just lock out. You shouldn't be feeling pain in the back of the knee. It should be simply these muscles and feel it. Yeah? Get a free go at smacking your own bum and hamstrings. Are we feeling the tension there? Now create 80% of the pull pulling back and 20% pushing forward with the back foot. And just be mindful when that back foot's pushing forward, where are we feeling tension now? Are we feeling that in the hip and the thigh? Are we feeling that? You can even use both. Have I got tension there? Yes. Have I got tension on the back leg? Yes. Have I got upright? Have I got my core active? Yes. Happy days. Okay? So that stance there, guys, if you didn't already know, is the moment in your gait cycle as you get to there. Okay? And all we're doing is practicing to get some legs, some, some, some strength and muscle, muscle working in these back lines so it's going to improve when we walk. Okay? Hope that made sense. Switch legs, please. So other leg. I'm maybe explaining this a little bit too much for some of you, but some of you I know you'll need this, okay? So get a check. Don't necessarily go straight to the heel drag first. Just check, we've got a soft hip. Hip, hip coming back a bit. Front foot, uh, shin bone is vertical. Both knees parallel, yes. I'm gonna start to press the floor down with my front heel, and I'm trying not to move a millimeter of anything as I do that. So look down the line. Because as we start to pull that front leg back, what can happen is your pelvis can twist, your hips can hike, your back and arch and all of, the, all of the above. So just be mindful of that, okay? Now start to go into your 80% of the pull back, 20% pushing that back foot forward. Hold it all together in the middle. You see, I keep stepping out of this because it's quite hard work. And I've got to teach a body fit class at seven o'clock. Yay, go me. Third shower of the day, woo -hoo. How's that tension feel? Any noticeable difference between your front leg as you held that one in front? Yeah, because we tend to operate in a, in a asymmetrical basis, so no doubt you might feel one more than the other. I certainly do. And I'm working on that constantly, and it is getting better. Okay, cool. Have a little breather from there. Okay, just a quick warm up on the lunge stance. In fact, what we are. You know what? I'm just going to go with this, okay? So I want you to take, because I'm going to be kneeling, right? Let me explain, you're going to need something to kneel on, unless you're, you're really kind of uh, strong and at home, you don't mind the hard floor or any of that, that's totally cool. Okay, but we're going to operate in two, two kneeling positions from this one, gang. We're going to operate firstly in what I call a tall kneeling position. Yeah, so I'm looking at the vertical stack of the knee, the hip, the shoulder. We should be careful because when we're here, we're, it's so easy to shift the hips forward, right? See that big arch in my back? That's where the loads were, it's compressing me. So make sure you, you try and look at the, the vertical line through there, not, not a, a sway back, okay? This is the first stance. The second one is going to be, and I want to all try this, is going from a double kneeling position like this to simply bringing one leg round and in front like that. How does that feel? Have a little go. Without this, if you can get it. Yeah? Can we, can we look at more of a sagittal kind of, uh, uh, not a straight lift, you're probably going to have some leg kicking out, but watch that we're not swinging it around, okay? Try and come in a straight line as best you can. Ugh. And then back again. Just practice that a few times. There. 
Yeah? So from split stance, I've got both hips in extension. As soon as I bring one leg forward, I've got one hip in extension and one hip in flexion, which is kind of key to a lot of our training we do. Okay, can we try that on the other side? So again, tall lean position, sweep the leg round, bring it back, try and balance. Watch that we're not leaning over as well and bring that leg straight. Try and keep the, as much upright as you can with this. Yeah, and we'll try it on one side. Okay, we're going to do those exercises with a dumbbell or a kettlebell. Okay, and we're going to do what I call a wood chop. So from this position, we're going to bring it to the shoulder. We're going to chop it around that back leg. I'm going to bring it back to the shoulder. I'm going to bring the leg in front. Yeah, I'm going to do the chop again. I'm going to bring the arms back. I'm going to bring the knee back and so on. So it's going to go tall kneel chop, split stance chop. Yeah, tall kneel chop, split stance chop. Oh, could be on top of the pops. That's the new one for 2021. Tall knee chop, split stance chop. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, all the beat makers listening will be like, I've got to get you a tune for that. <laughs> okay, that's the first exercise, okay? And we're just going to keep going on one side. Yeah, just one side. It's too messy to then change the weight over and do all that. We'll do one side and we'll repeat. Okay, cushions needed again. Right? How, to, how much cushions do you need and support you need depends on if we all stand up. How deep? How deep is your lunge? Is your lunge how deep? <laughs> Sorry. It's when you're working on your own in this place, it gets a little bit, it gets a bit spooky quiet. Okay, I want you to go straight to that stance we, we kind of just did earlier when we were doing the, um, the heel drag. Yeah, remember? I hope you haven't forgot that already. Split stance, what I call a unilateral stance. Okay, from here, how low can we go? I'm not, I'm not going here, by the way, I'm lowering my body, I'm keeping that stance. Shift the hips back, so this is the lunge we're working on. There's the low position. So if you won't be able to get down there, don't try and get too low down. Try again, I want you to do about three to five on each side, please. And I want you to look for angles, symmetry of leg positions and everything. Just, just try and map it up in parallels. Okay, so if you know your knee's turning in, that's not good. How low can you go? Okay, when we do the work, I don't want to make this too complicated, but I do want you to, to improve through this, and I can't keep it pissed all the time. Okay, let's say some of you were getting to about here, where the cushions are, that's where you're going to work from. Okay, uh, other, others might be able to go down deeper, but I want the cushion just to be some form of a, of a tangible kind of something, something there that you can just tap the knee onto. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit of a simple up and down. Yeah, we're getting that. Yeah, if you don't want to go so low, you've got more cushions stacked. That's not it though. We take a dumbbell as well, or a kettlebell. Because I want you to move forward with this guy. We've, we've done enough static work like this, you should all be comfortable with that. We're going to move forward in a step. So let me show you. I'm going to start in a low position. I'm going to have the cat again. I'm looking at my stance, I'm not here. I'm condensing it a bit into that short lunge. I'm going to have the weight in the front leg side. And I'm going to simply swing it a couple of times. And as the weight comes forward, I just take a step there. Yeah, see I've got the weight there. I step back, bring myself into position, and I start again. I'm going to try and reverse this, okay? So I swing, as the weight comes up, I step. Yeah, just a movement forward, just one step. But the, the trick or the challenge is, is coming from a deeper set position. Because this is going to potentiate your glutes, your thigh, it's going to make your legs stronger and, and a whole bunch of other rewards, okay? So remember as the weight comes forward, there, because I'm just working on my natural body's movement gear, okay, which is all our trainings, a lot of it is about. Okay, the last one, if you can remember, the last two are already good. The last one, we've done this numerous times, I'm just going to quickly explain, because you, I know you've rolled through this quite a lot, it's the one where you lie on your back and we do a single arm press, okay, so it's like a single arm uh, chest work. Okay, the trick with this one, or what to remember, is if you say the weight's in my left arm, I'm going to bring my left leg to tabletop like that. Okay, same side, left, left. My left arm extends up in a punching manner, my left leg extends, as long as you can keep full hip extension. If you want to lower the leg, right, that's fine, but make sure I do not lose any of this space under my back. And to keep, to keep that there, I want you to posteriorly tilt. Okay, have a little practice on the other side, please, and then we'll get going. So I'm going on the right, right leg tabletop, left leg stays down, I'm going to press and extend. So as the leg extends, I want you to think of 
posterior tilt of that pelvis. I want to really glue your deep core muscles, switch them on, light them up, whatever you want to say, but they are going to be your support for this. I can't stress that enough. Okay? Leg goes too, too far down and low, and you're losing that connectivity, with, it's just a bit of a waste of time. And potentially it's going to hurt you. Okay, so I hope you're all there. I can still see some of you moving on the screen, so that's good. You know, I've done a runner. Okay, right, grab yourself a quick drink. I'm going to turn the heater off in here because we do not need that right now. Okay. Can you all remember the exercises? I wonder. I wonder. Tall kneel, chop, split stance, chop. Yeah? We do this, that one to stand and then we do the single arm press. There you go. 6.26. I'm going to set this timer up, gang, so enjoy. Have rests when you need, if you need. 45.20. Here we go. So that's like one round. Try and keep the, your body upright as best you can. Try not to let the hips turn as we do this bit here. What's moving? Your upper body. So let's just for the moment dissociate upper and lower body. Well, get a nice dynamic swing through there. We're halfway. Nice swing. See how it's really pulling my upper body around there. Yeah? Right past the leg. Core control. It's getting harder now. It's getting harder not to cheat. So remember that for yourselves. Okay. Nice one to start. Okay. So I'm just going to use this cushion as just something so my knee doesn't get hurt. I'm going to kneel on my left knee, right foot in front. And when I win, because we've got extra rest time, didn't we? So nice to you all, so nice. As the weight comes up, you step forward. Bam, there's your midpoint. Step it back, set it up. Again, when we step up, drive the front heel into the floor. Okay? I want you to ask yourself this. As you come up, and before the step, as you come up, where are you coming from? It's got to be the front heel. Okay? Drive it into the floor. Here, use your timings to take that step. So it'll be a bit more dynamic now. When you've got it dialed in, you can probably do one rep back to back every time, just a little lift. Are we feeling the glute work at the front leg? 10 seconds. Uh, only go slow as you feel comfortable. Uh, it's functional. It's functional. Okay, single arm press. So take it down the floor. I give you extra rest time for these moments. Right, bring the weight in one hand. Bring that leg up to, to the tabletop. Same side, push, reach away, posterior tilt, gently bring it back. I want you to go slow and steady with these, please. I know I probably want you to do about six, seven maybe in the time, so slow and steady both ways. Always keep your forearm vertical, gang. Keep your forearm pointing up like you're holding the butt end of a glass of fine wine or something. You can't spill a drop. <sighs> now we call it having to really work. Keep that navel pulled in. Keep the posterior tilt, keep it quality. Don't worry about how many you do, just work everyone individually. And that's how real results come to the table. And that felt a lot longer than 45 seconds. And remember which side you've just done, yeah? Because I can't see through that screen so well. Okay, tall kneeling. So remember we're going with the opposite leg. Tall kneeling first. Tall kneeling. Did anyone know Tall Neil? I used to go to school with him. Anyone? Chop. Pop it back. Leg. Chop. Pop it back. All the way through this, just think, have you got your deep core muscles uh, nice and tight? Yeah. I want the outer layers to be elastic. Yeah. But I want the deep core muscles to be like a rock. Be up to halfway there. Uh, keep the hips level. Upper, lower body dissociation. Dead simple, but 
They're ineffective, especially if you're a golfer. Oh, this is all good both ways. Deep core, check in with that core. Wow. Ooh. I think the tension's in the deal too with that kind of stuff. Okay, remember which side you did before? How good did that glute feel while you were coming up? Let's test the other. I'm testing my left now. And then I know my left is better, so. Again, watch when I'm in a big open stance like this. Short neck. Ready? Drive off the heel. Step over the cushion. Step back. Lower your body down. And again, step over the cushion. Just smooth control. Set yourself up each time. And just occasionally look down at the knee before you come up. Here. Is it wiggling in? Check your front knee as you come up on the drive up. Ugh. Are we keeping it parallel? Or is it one I'm wiggling towards a big toe? Ugh. It's what we call knee valgus. We want to keep it, keep it, keep away from that if you can. Because you're only going to upset your knees and your joints. Ten seconds. Time's good, you're not rushing around, you can get set up. Know that that glass of gin and tonic's only half an hour away. Ha! Give me half the bottle, man! Okay, ready? Leg, arm. Oh, leg, arm. Think, even use the other hand, place it on your tummy. Are we feeling that submerge as we come up and out with that, or are we feeling it relax? It wants to tighten up more here. I don't mean brace your core, I mean draw the navel in, keep the slight posterior tilt on that extent, leg extension side. <sighs> Control it down. You can almost bring the other arm into this as well. Like reciprocal movements with the arms. Check the bottom earlier. <sighs> Are we still working on going with the divider clock stopped? <laughs> <laughs> well. I, I stopped there three seconds from the end, I just thought, I think I've, I've missed the, the timer then. I was convinced that was longer than 45. Oh, it doesn't bear well, does it? Because you know, I've got another hour and a half. We're super strong at the end of this. Okay. Right, here's where we go with a little cushion pickup. Yay! There's going to be from a squat, right? Which I dare say we do enough of them in our average day, we just don't really think about it, right? Pick stuff up. Although I find most times if you're going to pick something up, you probably will adapt to split stance, right? I mean, maybe if you're going to pick it up from an open, from a bar touch stance, that might happen, but if we're not thinking, we just kind of flex over and do this kind of thing, which is so easy. I, I guarantee that's why you do it, because it's easy on the body, right? I've propped one little cushion on top of another. I'm going to simply. Dead simple. I'm going to pick them up. I'm going to pick them up slightly differently though. Let me show you. And it just engages a little bit more rotation and it just makes it a little bit more functional. So as opposed to me picking up the cushion like this, yeah, I want you to go one hand over the other, one hand over. So I'm going to, so I'm going to like wrap my hands here, like that. Yeah, I'm going to pick it up and just not from the side there, my squat, which isn't perfect, but, but just be careful when we're squatting. We need to bring the hips down, right, and out, that way. There's my squat. Okay, I'm not going to squat like this. Yeah, I'm, I'm only like a third of the squat. I want you to give you some energy down, heavy on your heels, sit the hips back, take the cushion here and here, and then the thing from here is keeping neutral spine. You're going to step, come up and step back here, and we're going to bring the arms up light as a feather. You're going to hinge back. Now the trick now is to get extension. So I'm extending my thoracic spine bit by bit. There, not pushing the hips out and just hinging back. There's no hinge on that, okay? I'm going to articulate up, okay? So I'm going to have a little try of that. And if some of you can't squat so low, then have 10 cushions, right? Do it from here, I don't mind, right? What I do mind is you going too low and work too hard. If your squat looks like this, yeah? Flat back, neutral spine, yeah? So we're alternating the pickup. Step back, nice bit of extension. So imagine when you do Pilates, you do the swan, is it? On your front, and we're just articulating the thoracic spine. It's like that's what I'm trying to get you to do here. Yeah, not jam into the lower back. So just be careful with that one. Okay, we can use the cushions for the second one. I want you to practice this now. And if you have another member of the family in the house, 
that can just see how straight your, your alignment is if I put this up against my back. Right, see that? We're trying to maintain as best we can there. See if I just pull tight, see there's a little gap in, in my lower back, that's my natural, what I don't want is this. See the gap there between? Heads forward, in a plank position here. What's that gonna do to you? It's just gonna create this crap posture, right? We wanna try and be open at the front. So we bring tight yourselves down to the knees on each cushion. Some of you, you've been in my classes maybe for, for several, well, a couple of years doing this one. Okay, elbows, and we want to try and therefore create about 45 degree angle at the hips. Okay, this is, this is so key. And I say that all the time, if you're stuck here, it's not going to do much. And if you're too far forward, you're just going to compress your back. So just keep walking it back, have a little look from the side if you've got a mirror. Okay, then from there I suggest all of you very slowly start to go to a little bit of a posterior 12 o'clock tilt. Okay? But with that said, at the same time, I want you to go to a bit of thoracic extension. Like what you do when you have the cushion here, or the swan. Right, we've got to institute both those at the same time. That is the tricky bit. Because when you're not in hamstring, I can't go and adjust you and help you. So a slight posterior tilt with a little bit of thoracic extension. Okay, and then when you're there, you're just going to lift one knee, alternating the knee lift. Okay, you probably knew I was going to say that. And if we keep it all together, keep really quiet with all your body, that should massively benefit your transverse abdominals. Which I think is the key to many people's downfall in regards to a lot of back ill, Ill health is, is the lack of core strength, especially the deep core. So that one is awesome, right? Okay, single leg raise. Okay, now you do need your chair for the third one. Changing positions on this third round quite a bit. Okay. You're going to need a wee dumbbell as well, or a kettlebell. Yeah, kettlebell. Okay. Let me, explain. Let me explain this without making it too complicated. Over the past, right, the last few days, we've been working on stuff like this. We've been kind of lifting the leg onto the chair, right? Can you remember that? Pressing the weight up and adding a bit of rotation. Okay? I want that, but I also want this. So when we come, so there's the move. As we come down from the move, I'm going to keep balancing on this leg. The other leg's going to come. I'm going to do a little bit of a stalk stance. And as luck has it, look, that chair's just there nicely for me to bounce on. So it's going to go stalk stance here. You're going to pull it up. You're going to lift, press, rotate. Uh, there. Yeah, do you want to practice this along? So I'll, I'll hold hands away for a few seconds, let you get this set up. Either use the arm of the chair or something if you haven't got a chair. Okay? If you start, both feet together, weight in your right hand. You're going to press the weight up as you lift the left foot onto the chair. Yeah? And I'm looking at a vertical line now running from my right hand down my right heel. And now I'm going to hold that line and rotate slightly my ribs to the left. Just my ribs, not my hips. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to hold onto the edge of the chair anywhere you can. The left leg lengthens out and I just take a cheeky little bow. Almost reaching the weight down towards the edge of the chair. Okay, keep the tummy connected. And then we come up, try it one more time. So we come up from there, we pull, we lift, we press, we rotate. Yeah, there's another song title. Bring it down, hold the chair, take it back. Yeah, just be careful. When we're in this stock stance position here, guys, I'll show you from the side view, we don't really want to have a massive discrepancy in regards to where the hips are. So I want to be there. See, I'm neutral there. I'm not neutral if the leg's round. I'm definitely not neutral if I'm twisted there. So you're trying to keep this area the same distance from the ground. And if we do, you will feel this completely transfer a, a lot of the weight onto your glutes. And it's a, that's what I want, okay? I want the glutes to fatigue. Right, let's do this. Enjoy. Why is that not turned off? So I've got the heat pumping in. Despicable. It melt. Okay. Can you remember those three? Cushion pick up first. I'd love to know who's got the most cushions on the ground right now. If anyone's just got one and it looks like a sheet of paper. <laughs> okay, deep squat to stand. Let's get the music on. Hope you're enjoying it. Come on, stretch. Should we just do this? Pick it up. Step one foot back. Keep the heel lifted on the back foot. Come up. Hinge the elbows. Pause there. Extend, try and keep a little bit of that posterior tilt on, and then we can bring it back. So you can do this and then let it go, by the way. Let the cushion go. Pick it up, step back, T-spine extension. 
Step back, put it down, let it go, come up. So we're picking up and putting it down each time. Just keep the same leg going back unless you have switched it yourself. And think, once you've got the step back here and you've got the extension, think about stretching your abdominal wall. Oh, just a nice stretch. Oh, just a little of time. Okay, kneeling planks. You've got 20 seconds to get set up. Probably take 10 of them to get the positions. Which is about now. So start to come down to your planks. You've plenty of time. Feet are up. 45 degrees. Slight posterior tilt. Right, now slowly press into the opposite arm and knee and bring the other knee a millimetre from the ground. And then switch it. And as you do all of that, try and fight the excessive curve that wants to creep into your shoulders, the lower back that wants to sit, keep that tummy pulling in, and slowly take five seconds to lift one knee, and then swap, halfway there. We're gonna fight all movement at all costs, so what usually happens is your hips are gonna, are gonna rock left and right. Keep that still, keep that still. And if your body starts to shake a bit, it means it's working. It should feel pretty hard. Eight seconds. Okay, good. And that one is, is phenomenal for the, for the transverse abdominals. Okay, can you remember this with a chair? Do you want to follow me with this? I'm going to go with my left foot lifting. So the way to my right hand. Okay, I'm holding the chair with my left hand. It's a tall posture. Okay, ready? So press the weight up, bring the foot up onto the chair. Pause there. Rotate your ribs slightly to the left. Bring it down. Hold onto the chair. Remember what I said about the hips and everything on this? Slight bend in the leg. Almost like you're doing a single squat there. Up, pull, lift, rotate, good. Go at your own pace, slow and steady with these. Don't need many, you don't need many. Keep the leg bent, okay? So there's a nice kind of pattern of flowing movements to this. It's controlled, it's deliberate, and that glute's starting to feel like work. Now keep the TBA switched on. Carry that plank forward, what you just finished. Bend the leg, don't lock out the leg here. Nice, I do like that. I do like it. the added socks. Now, well done, me. Thanks. Yeah, well done. It was pretty good, that. Yeah, I'll use that again for two. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Cool. What are you talking about? Okay, squat pick up, round two. Jib a jab. Remember to step back on the opposite leg, unless you're alternating it. I'm going to pick it up the opposite way. Oh, nice stretch. Take your time with this bit. We're T keeping the, the core control with a lot of this, okay? Special on that step back and that articulation. Slightly posterior in the tilt in the pelvis this way. So as your arms go over, I want your pelvis to go that way slightly, okay? Think about every rep. Okay, kneeling plank. Plenty of time to get this set up. Again, go over the detail, gang. Even just stir the knees down on If you don't want to lift the knees, that's totally cool. Keep the knees down, but just check in with your posture and your positioning. So remember this slight posterior detail that they start with this slight bit of thoracic extension at the same time, which kind of goes against the, the movement of the spine. Just going to try and challenge the abs a bit more. So feel slowly start to press in one forearm and the opposite knee. And then lift the other one just up. I mean, keep it on the cushion even. 20 seconds, 22 and a half seconds, to be precise. Good, I can keep looking at that screen, see where our body wants to go. And we all have a cheat pattern, we all have a position we put our bodies in to make it feel like we're doing more, but we're not. To really channel your mind into this. Oh. Woo. Okay, it's the chair time. Quad two, good for time. So the weight's now on my left hand. I'm going to bring the chair that way so I can hold and I can also place the foot on. So standing posture. 
holding it with my right. Okay. Good job. Slight rotation towards you guys at this point. Uh, bring it down. Keep on that leg. Send the other one back. Soften the knee. Come into it. Watch the hips again. Try to get the hips relatively level. Up you come. Press. Rotate. Should be sticking your glutes about now, right? If our hips are in the right position, we're getting enough hinge there and then driving the heel into the floor. <sighs> One of the strong functioning glutes. Okay, go one more, sneak a little one at the end. Cool. Session complete. Okay. We've got enough time. You like your devils for one more, okay? So we'll do one more round. And you're gonna need a dumbbell, okay? I'll explain each one to you. And we're gonna be for the first time, we're gonna be working from a quadruped, okay? Like that. So you know the positions with this. Try and be as neutral as you can in your shoulders and your mid-back. Okay, soft bend in both arms. We're gonna do this with a weight. Okay, so I would go with your heavier option if you if you have one. And um, we're gonna do a single arm roll. Okay, so we already lie down on our back and we push the weight forward. You remember that from the chest? When we lie down on the tabletop and we push and extend the leg, this is the exact opposite. So now we've got the pec work, we need to put our work into the lats, okay, to balance this, 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 these shoulder pads. So we'll take the weight. I'm gonna go with my right hand from the box position here, okay? I'm gonna soften both elbows, I'm gonna give my abdominals a funky little brace, I'm gonna draw the navel in, try and expand my ribs and give that tummy breath. I'm gonna pull with my right arm like this, I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna extend my left leg out at the same time until my elbow just gets past the, uh, the rib, rib cage, just, just past there, I'm not up here, yeah, just past. Then I'm gonna very gently soften my standing arm, yeah, my, my left arm, I'm gonna slowly push into it and rotate towards you, hi, <sighs> yeah. And I'm going to bring it all the way back down again. Okay, try that again one more time. So soften everything, try not to lock out the joints. Pull, extend, pause here. Rotate towards me, but not from locking your arm up. Soften the arm and rotate. Okay? And as the leg extends out, remember the set, very similar to what we did on your back with the leg that extended out in front, we've got a posteriorly tilt. So as the leg comes back, make sure we're not getting it up here. Yeah, not Jim Fonda days, we want to just bring it, if anything, just below parallel, and then we need to switch on that posterior tilt, and that stops your back taking that load. Average leg weighs 35 pounds. I don't think you want to hold that behind you and let your lower back to hold on to that. So it's key that we keep that posterior tilt. Okay, we're coming off the ground for the next, next one, and then we're going back to the ground again. I just wanted to get you up and down. Okay, so this is going to be your split stance like this, but we're going to move sideways. So if I do it that way, see how I'm doing it from the side? I've got a split stance that wide, yeah, see that? But I'm moving sideways, I'm pushing off this heel, I'm going to take a step right. So the front leg lands first, front, then back. Yeah, I'll show you from the front view. So I'm going front, back, front, back. And I'm going to start to adopt not only just to remember the stance, guys, I don't want any of you just to be stepping in like a, a straight line. We're in a box. Visualize that box on the floor. Look at it. Step, step. But it's like a triangle, really. Yeah? We're in a triangle. So the back foot almost steps up the same position each time. But the front foot goes to the top edge of the box. Now, why have we got a weight in my hand, you ask? Because once I've done a step here, yeah? I want you to go in. Sorry, when the leg goes, I want you to do a little swing here and then step and pass it back. Like that. So if I step with my right leg, it goes in my left hand. Left leg, right hand. So we're swapping the opposite hand, yeah? And you've got the way in. From the side view, it looks like this. Step, yeah? It's a nice swinging action, keeping neutral spine. Notice my hips are moving backwards here. Stick my bum up a little bit there, see that? Not here. Okay, hope you're getting that. If that one was slightly confusing this part, yeah? Don't use the whip, just go into this. But add maybe a little bit of a skip with it. See, I could do that with a little skip like this. A little skip TV. Yeah, bring in a little bit of carry. But notice I'm landing soft. Okay, great for the glutes, great for rotation. The last one, if you thought some of those were 
but tough to digest when you get a load of this. Okay, I call this one, if some of you have heard of a Turkish get-up, you're probably all groaning right now, this is just the prep of a get-up, okay? It's basically we're going to get so far off the floor without using our well. You have to right use one arm, because one arm is going to have a small weight or no weight in the arm, okay? If you struggle holding things up, don't use a weight at all. I would suggest maybe you hold a glass of water half full and hold it like that. <laughs> okay, let me show you. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to try and talk through this. So if you can't see the screen, I'm going to do it together. So I'm lying on my back with my right arm straight up and my right leg is bent in front of me. My left leg is kicked slightly out to the side like that. Okay, very straightforward, move which don't spin. From here, I want to lean across to your left, but keep the right arm as it is and prop yourself up onto your left elbow like this. So that's the second part. Okay, the third part, we push the hand into the floor, we push off our elbow to our hand, yeah, and then you press into the bent leg foot and you lift and you create this lovely looking exercise. Right, it's like a side plank. Then I'm going to bring my bum back towards my heel, like that. I'm going to go from hand to reverse, how we get down hand to elbow, elbow, using your core, control the roll down. Okay, one more time on this side. So lean to the side, press, lift, up. Okay? I'd love to know what that looked like for you all at home. <laughs> okay? It's like a funky kind of roll up to get down. Very functional. If you can do that, you can, you can comfortably you know, get up off the floor very easily. Okay, there's your final three. Enjoy. We're running on, yeah, we're going to be pushing this. Why right, not better do it all, in fact? We might miss the Turkish get up. You know what? Yeah. Miss the get up because we haven't got time, please. So we'll just do two of them. Okay, we'll do the quadruped rotation, uh, the, the, the pull with the, with the leg extension, we'll do the side step. Okay? So sorry about the get up there. You probably all practice it perfectly then, though. Sorry, you just don't have time. You can practice it after. Right. I've got miles away there. I've got my rows. So opposite hand to leg comes out, yeah? Jenny back. Keep the energy soft in the elbows and the joints. Try and let your upper back, your shoulder blade, trying to take up some of this work. Pull, remember that little bit of rotation at the top. So notice my foot isn't too far away from the floor. I feel I can maintain. Ugh. Good core connection there, if I lift my leg up too high, I tell me myself I'm kidding, I feel it kind of start to tense up the lower back. We're not built to lift that leg straight back. <sighs> Oh, it's that rotation at the end, it's a killer. Oh, to not to knock out the arm. So remember which side you just did, okay? Might come in handy in a moment. Okay. So sidestep with the swing or not. So I'll just I'll start off and you can join in because we've got a few seconds to go. Remember the arm comes through, if you do not want it turns this way it comes through, yeah? And that way as it comes back. So we've got that internal, external rotation of the shoulder. If you want to crank it up a bit, add a little skip. It's we're so happy, so happy, not free. <laughs> go, hinge your back, little skip or little step. Keep the middle switched on, yeah? A stress, think core. Make it dynamic or not. And we're going to bend the leg here to move. Load to unload. Okay. Back to the row. Remember which side you did before. And do the other. Remember it's opposite arm to leg. Remember the posterior tilt. I know I keep going on about that, but if we don't connect that, it's going to go into your back. Big difference. Remember when we're coming into that rotation, yeah, keep a soft bend in the elbow. Almost try and rotate the both arms in slightly, especially on the standing arm, and turn it slightly round and in. <sighs> 20, 20 seconds. Keep the midsection braced. It shouldn't be feeling anything in your lower back now, right now, gang. It should be core. <sighs> Bit of rotation. Maybe the hip. 
both legs, make me feel a little bit of tension now. Last five seconds, one smooth one to finish. <sighs> Ooh, yes. Okay, you'd be pleased to know we've got one exercise left. Or not, maybe. This might be the highlight of your week and it's going to end soon then. Yeah, of course. <laughs> right, last round. Keep it simple. You can just not have a weight for this bit. So I step or skip or jump. I'm going to do some jumps. Here's a challenge. Can we keep the back foot off the floor? Can we not let the back foot touch down? But still hold that same quality? Or do you need to have that little touch? It's fine. Remember, land into the heel. Soft bend as you land, yeah? It wants to be kind of sinking. As soon as you land, it's sinking. The muscles are absorbing that. 10 seconds. Woo, it's nice one to finish with. Awesome. Well done, everyone. That was great. We missed a couple, but... On a scheme of things, I'd like to think you had a decent workout regardless, and I know you're all going to stop when we finish the meeting and get into those Turkish girls.